hi everyone myself geeta s assistant professor department of chemistry jss academy of technical education noida aktu university today i am going to discuss the topic rotational spectroscopy or nothing but microwave spectroscopy in this topic we can observe that there are two words are there so one is spectroscopy another one is rotational or microwave spectroscopy is nothing but the interaction of electromagnetic radiations with matter so here we are using microwave radiations to get a rotational spectrum so that's why this uh, part or we call it as a rotational spectroscopy the molecule usually so for the excitation from one energy to the higher energy level they need more energy that comes under uv the molecules for the vibration purpose they need little less energy so they'll comes under vibrational or ir spectroscopy for the simple rotation of any poly or diatomic molecules so for the rotation purpose they need little less energy so that comes under microwave uh, electromagnetic radiations so the electromagnetic radiations of uh, the range 3 into 10 to the power of 10 to 3 into 10 to the power of 12 hertz so those radiations we usually call it as microwave radiations the main objectives are the topics of this uh, uh, main objectives uh, objectives of this topics are theory of the microwave a rotational spectroscopy rotational energy levels transitions in rotational spectrum selection rule instrumentation of uh, rotational spectroscopy and applications of microwave spectroscopy so before going to the theory of this uh, you know rotational spectroscopy let us discuss what are the what are the necessary criteria to show rotational spectrum the first criteria is the molecule should possess a permanent dipole moment yes the molecule those molecules which shows permanent dipole moment so those molecule will give rotational spectra next question in your mind is what is dipole moment what is permanent dipole moment suppose if you connect are any two diatomic molecules or any polyatomic molecules they connect each other so with the masses m1 or m2 so the charges of the two atoms let us uh, uh, written as q plus and q minus so here in this case so r is the um, distance between the two atoms and q is the charge separation dipole moment is the product of separated charge and distance between the two atoms if two atoms are uh, you know two different atoms are atero nuclear atoms one is partially take an example as a hcl take an example as a take an example as an hcl in hcl so one is uh, uh, h is par you know partially positive charge partially positive charge and cl is partially negative charge so in this case mu is equal to q into r so the molecules like hcl co so these are heteronuclear diatomic molecules so they are having a permanent dipole moment so they are microwave active and those molecules are heteronuclear homonuclear molecules like h2 cl2 o2 they are they don't have any permanent dipole moment so they are microwave inactive and one more thing is rotational spectroscopy or microwave spectroscopy is applicable for gaseous phases only it is relay practically in the gas gas phases because the rotational motion is quantized in case of solids or liquids the rotational motion is not quantized due to the collisions between their molecules let's move to the absorption of electromagnetic radiations the coupling mechanism so here 
so in this so you can observe this so take an example is the hcl so in this case so h having a partial positive charge and cl minus having positive partial negative charge here you can see the change in the direction of the molecule so and this is the vertical component of the dipole and here so with the change in direction of the molecule so there is a change in uh, direction that is nothing but change in polarity polarity is nothing but so due to the change in polarity so the molecule having some permanent dipole moment so those molecule having a di permanent dipole moment so they are microwave active upon rotation upon rotation the molecules possess some electric field so those electric field or the frequency of this uh, oscillation is exactly equal to the radiations or the frequency of incident electromagnetic radiations the range of uh, microwave region so then only the you know absorption or emission will takes place so that gives emission or absorption spectra so let's move on to the theory of this uh, rotational spectroscopy this type of spectroscopy deals with the pure rotational motion of the molecule and is thus also known as rotational spectroscopy the condition for absorbing resonance is the molecule should possess permanent dipole moment so we discussed already when a molecule having a dipole moment so the molecule will undergo rotates a rotation will takes place so upon rotation it produces uh, some oscillating frequency so this oscillating frequency is exactly matches with the oscillating frequency of incident radiations then only absorption or emission will takes place so the this can be explained by two things are that will produce two spectrum one is absorption spectrum another one is emission spectrum in case of absorption spectrum the transfer of energy from the incident microwave radiations to the molecule when there is a jump from lower energy uh, rotational energy level to higher rotational energy level under this condition the molecule exhibit absorption microwave spectrum that is rotational energy from lower energy to higher energy level the molecule after absorbing electromagnetic radiation a jump from lower energy to the higher energy level so this gives absorption spectrum when there is a reversion from the from a reversion to the uh, those case so there is a energy transition from higher energy to the lower energy so in this case the energy will transfer from uh, you know molecule to the electromagnetic radiations so this gives emission spectra so based on the moment of inertia we can classify the rigid rotator into the four types so before going to that so we just discuss about or we just let you know how what is moment of inertia so moment of inertia is nothing but a measure of object resists to changes in its rotation rate so it is the rotational along with the mass so that we call it as a moment of inertia so here the molecule having three moment three moment of inertia ia ib and ic where ia is nothing but principal axis so in case of rigid rotors are classified into four groups linear spherical and asymmetric and symmetric top molecules in case of linear so the such as hcl ocs and all so the principal axis is zero and ib is i is equal to ic so these type of molecules we usually call it as linear rotors so in this case uh, here this is a hcl this is a linear molecule so this is a principal axis the rotation will takes place in this axis so here the moment of inertia is zero so these two are ib and ic so there are uh, other moment of inertia so ib is equal to ic where ia is principal axis the rotation will takes place in this axis ia is equal to 
zero. The next one is spherical top molecules. For example, octahedral or tetrahedral molecules like CH4 or C2H4 or SF6, they are examples for spherical top molecules. So here, so they are tetrahedral in nature. All the sides are means uh, equal and IA is equal to IB is equal to IC. The third one is symmetric tops rotors. So the example is NH3, CH3, CN, C3Cl. So these are the example for symmetric top rotors. So other it can be classified into prolate and uh, oblate also. So here, so you can see that IA is equal to IB, but it's not equal to IC. So this is the conditions for symmetric top rotors. And fourth one is asymmetric top rotors. So in this, so asymmetric, the name itself, it says that asymmetric. So all the four, uh, you know, moment of inertia, all the three moment of inertia is, you know, not equal. IA is not equal to IB and not equal to IC in case of asymmetric top rotors. Example is water, CH3OH, vinyl chloride. These are the examples for asymmetric top rotors. This table is simply uh, brief before what are the condition uh, for the linear, spherical and symmetric and asymmetric top molecules. So in this, so we just restrict only to the only diatomic molecules. So when you come to the homonuclear and heteronuclear diatomic molecules, so homonuclear diatomic molecules, they don't have any dipole moment. They have a zero dipole moment, nonpolar molecules. So there is no interaction uh, with the radiations, hence they are microwave inactive. Heteronuclear molecules are like HCl, HF and CO have permanent dipole moment, polar compounds, change in dipole, so occurs during the rotation, hence the interaction with the radiation takes place, therefore heteronuclear atomic, diatomic molecules are microwave active. Next move on to rigid rotor. A rigid rotated. So here the what is meant by rigid rotated? A rotating diatomic molecule whose nuclei are supposed to be separated by definite mean distance by may be treated as a rigid rotated with free axis of rotation. A diatomic molecule can rotate around a vertical axis. The rotation energy is quantized. So let us uh, assume to take two atoms, the masses of the two atoms is M1 and M2 and uh, it is the center of uh, gravity is uh, C and R1 and R2 are the distances uh, from the center of gravity to masses M1 and M2. So the rotational axis, so, so this is the rotational axis assume that this uh, ro uh, rigid rotator is not an elastic bond so this is r naught r naught is the distance between so the two masses m1 and m2 so we know that from the rotation about the center of gravity so m1 r1 so r1 r1 is equal to m2 R2. So M1 R1 is nothing but the mass of uh, one atom and uh, R1 is the distance from the center of gravity uh, that is equal to M2 R2. So from this equation we can write it as R0 is equal to R1 plus R2 or nothing but R1 is equal to R0 minus R2 R2. Substitute this in equation you know above this equation so you will get m1 r1 is equal to m2 into r0 minus r1 instead of r2 so i can write it as r2 is equal to r0 minus r1 let's rearrange this equation so here uh, m1 r1 is equal to m2 r0 minus m2 r1 so and then again you rearrange, you take it into the right hand side, M1 R1 plus M2 R1 is equal to M2 R0. So this 
so for the little rearrangement you will end up with r1 is equal to m2 r0 divided by m1 plus m2 similarly suppose if you uh, substitute the values instead of r1 so r1 is equal to r0 minus r2 so you will get r2 is equal to m1 r0 divided by m1 plus m2 so here m1 r1 is equal to m2 r2 and you substituted r0 is equal to r1 plus r2 this equation so we will end up with the two results r1 and r2 values so now you substitute so r1 and r2 values in the equation 1 so suppose if you substitute this in equation 1 so you will get so ic is equal to m1 r2 square plus m2 r2 square so here i is equal to m1 into m2 r2 square and r0 square divided by m1 plus m2 plus m1 square m2 r square divided by m1 m2 square so with a rearrangement you will get m1 r1 divided by m1 plus m2 into r0 square so as we know that m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 is nothing but reduced mass so that is represented by mu so the overall equation so now is equal to i is equal to mu r0 square so mu is reduced mass at this point we are able to calculate or determine so moment of inertia so now a diatom let's move on a diatomic molecule can rotate around a vertical axis the rotational energy is quantized by the using schrodinger equation the rotational energy level allowed to the rigid diatomic molecule are given by ej is equal to h square divided by 8 pi square i j into j plus 1 joules where j is rotational quantum number so where j is equal to 0 1 2 3 etc i is equal to moment of inertia that is nothing but mu r square just we uh, derived this one and mu is reduced mass m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 and where r is internuclear distance and h is Planck's constant let's move on energy levels of rigid diatomic rotor so rotor energy uh, for a rigid diatomic molecule is uh, quantized ej is quantized and it is represented by h square uh, by 8 pi square ij into j plus 1 joules and even normally we express in terms of centimeter inverse also suppose if you want to express in terms of centimeter inverse so the whole equation should be multiplied by h into c so then the equation will be expressed in terms of centimeter inverse so e is epsilon naught j is equal to ej divided by hc so the equation becomes h divided by 8 pi square ic j into j plus 1 centimeter inverse so this whole term we call it as b a constant b so equation it becomes ej is equal to b into j into j plus 1 centimeter inverse where b is nothing but rotational constant so the value of rotational constant is h divided by 8 pi square ic transitions observed in rotational spectrum so here you can observe that so this is a ground state so this is a first excitation state second excitation state third excitation state and fourth excitation state where j is equal to 0 1 2 3 4 So now we discuss what are the transition energy so transition observed in the rotational spectrum so here so first energy for the transition j is equal to 0 to j is equal to 1 so the formula is ej is equal to h divided by 8 pi square ic j into j plus 1 so the term the whole term h divided by 8 pi square 
IC, we call it as a B rotational constant. The formula is EJ is equal to BJ into J plus 1. So now we are uh, calculating what are the transitions. What is the transition value um, in our rotational spectrum? So here you consider first one, the transition from ground state to first energy state. So EJ to EJ is equal to 1 minus J is equal to 0. So here you substitute the value here. So here you substitute where J is equal to 1 and J is equal to 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So B into 1 into 1 plus 1 minus minus. So B into the value substitute the value of J here. So B into 0 into 0 plus 1 that is equal to 0. So the value will become 2B minus 0. So the transition delta J is equal to 2B centimeter inverse. For the transition from J is equal to 1 to J is equal to 2. So how to calculate this? So that this in this transition delta J is equal to J2 EJ2 minus EJ1. So here you substitute the value here. The formula is B into J into J plus 1. Substitute the value of J is equal to 2 and J is equal to 1. So the value is 6B minus 2B and delta J value is 4B centimeter inverse. So this is from 1 to sorry this is from 1 to 2. This is not 0 to 1 this is 1 to 2. Since the allowed rotational transitions are um, here nu is equal to h divided by h pi square i c j into j plus 1. So b j into j plus 1. So now you substitute the values here and if you calculate this so wave number of different rotational um, energies will be 0, 2b, 6b and 12b. So that we I will explain in the using spectrum. So now for two adjacent rotation states the energy difference is given by delta j is equal to Ej plus 1 minus Ej that is, is equal to 2b. 2b is nothing but hence the wave number of lines absorbed in the rotational spectrum will be 2b, 4b, 6b and 8b centimeter inverse and the various lines in the rotational spectra will be equally spaced by 2b. Various lines in the rotational spectra will be equally spaced by 2b. The separation between the lines is 2b. Let's move on to the selection rule. So the selection, the main specific selection rule of rotational spectroscopy is so delta j is equal to plus or minus 1. So this is a specific rule and that means the molecule will jump from one you know with plus or minus one energy state that means zero to one or one to two or two to three three to four these transitions we call it as allowed transitions so the transitions like zero to the transitions like zero to two are two to four so these type of transitions are we call it as not allowed transitions so the selection rule is delta J is equal to plus or minus 1. Another or a grass rule is the necessary criteria is the molecule should possess permanent dipole moment. In case of homonuclear and nitronuclear dipole moment, homonuclear they don't have any uh, dipole moment and they do not give any pure rotational spectrum. Heteronuclear dynamic molecule have a pure, they give pure rotational spectrum. So here delta J is equal to plus 1 it indicates that it gives absorption spectra. Delta J is equal to minus 1 that gives emission spectra. So this is rotational spectra for rigid diatomic molecules. So here you can observe that. 
सो दिस इज द ग्राउंड स्टेट एनर्जी जीरो वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सो डेल्टा ई जे फॉर इन दीज केसेस फॉर जीरो टू वन दिस इज टू बी वन टू टू इज सिक्स बी टू टू थ्री इज ट्वेल्व बी एंड थ्री टू फोर इज ट्वेंटी बी एंड दिस इज हियर यू कैन एब्सर्व दैट द ट्रांसलेशन ओनली फ्रॉम जीरो टू वन और वन टू टू और टू टू थ्री सो जीरो टू टू और टू टू फोर सो दीज टाइप ऑफ ट्रांसलेशंस आर नॉट अलोड so here the spacing between the lines is 2b 2b 4b 6b 8b and 10b so the difference between the two adjacent lines is 2b 2b so this concludes uh, you know calculation and determination of a uh, uh, transition energy levels in case of rigid rotator a uh, calculation of um, you know determination of moment of inertia and the rotational spectrum of rigid diatomic molecules now let us move to the determination of bond length of hcl molecule this is one of the application so if uh, if they are going to give the uh, b the value of b um, how to calculate the moment of inertia and uh, r r the new internuclear distance so let us take an example in this case so Uh, they are given uh, the value of uh, take an example as an HCl in case of HCl the they are given um, the frequency difference between the two successive absorption line is twenty point seven and it is identified with the space to be calculate the bond length of HCl so here so now uh, let us discuss this how to solve this uh, numerical. so they given the value the successive frequency difference between the two successive absorption line is 2b 2b so the value is 20.7 in order to uh, get the uh, you know moment of inertia we want b value so b value is divided by 2 so you will get 10.35 So now the formula is I is equal to h divided by eight pi square b c, or b is equal to usually the formula is b is equal to h divided by eight pi square i c. We want i. You take out i outside, and the formula becomes h divided by eight pi square b c. Substitute the values where h is Planck's constant six point six two into ten to the power of minus twenty seven divided by eight into three point one four is pi. Three point one four whole square, and the value of B is ten point three five, and C is speed of light three into ten to the power of ten centimeter inverse. So, after calculation, you will get two point seven zero into ten to the power of minus forty gram per centimeter square. So, this is I moment of inertia. So, in order to calculate the internuclear distance, the formula is I is equal to mu r square so if you want to calculate the internuclear distance r you want the value of i and even you want the value of mu also so for that reason so now you calculate the reduced mass how to calculate the reduced mass mu is equal to m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 where m1 is the mass of you know one atom and m2 is the mass of another atom so mass of h and mass of cl divided by M one plus M two into one divided by N, where N is Avogadro's number. So now you substitute to the values. The mass of a H is one point zero zero eight into mass of M two is thirty five point four six. So substitute the value, and you will end up with the answer one point six two seven into ten to the power of twenty four. So this is the reduced mass. So now you having the values of high also and the value of mu. So now it's easy to calculate the internuclear distance. So R square divided by mu is equal to I HCl divided by mu mu. R R square HCl is equal to I I divided by mu. Substitute the values. So internuclear distance R is equal to one point two nine angstrom. So this will help you. to calculate the uh, internuclear distance and even the separation between the energy levels uh, i is equal to 0 i is equal to 0 and uh, j is equal j is equal to 0 and j is equal to 1 will be given by 
delta j is equal to 2 h square root of 8 pi square i that is equal to 2 b h c so that is nothing but 0 0.5 405 into 10 to the power of 24 arc so this is the separation between energy levels from 0 to 1 so it is evident from the above example that examination of microwave spectrum is an accurate method for calculating internuclear distance at least for simple diatomic molecules Likewise, we can calculate the you know, moment of inertia, the uh, moment of inertia or intermolecular uh, distance of uh, CO or OCS, any, any diatomic molecule, it is an application of microwave spectroscopy also. So, take one more example, calculate the value of I and R of uh, CO. So, they given B just like a previous example. So, now you calculate the I first, substitute the values. So, you know the value of H, 8 pi square B into C. The value of B they given, so you substitute all are uh, constant. So, you will get an answer I is equal to 1.45579 into 10 to the power of minus 49 kg per kg meter square. So, and now using this, you... Uh, calculate uh, you know r is equal to 1.131 angstrom so in the instrumentation let us move to the instrumentation part in the instrumentation we can uh, see the six things one is uh, source uh, source inlet crystal detector amplifier oscillograph and power supply so here the radiation electromagnetic radiation from a source that will pass onto the waveguide and that again it will pass to the detector the detector will vibrate and produce a selected signal that will be passed to the amplifier amplifier will amplify and then it will be displayed as a pattern or screen so and then through the oscillograph the frequencies of the detect radiations will be determined so after this you can you will get a in terms of graphs or patterns and using this you are able to identify moment of inertia and um, you know internuclear distances can be calculated using you know oscillator frequency then move to applications of microwave spectroscopy Microwave spectroscopy has used as a monitoring and control in industrial process. It's having a various applications. So now it, it's a non-vasive. That means the measurement can be made in, outside the reaction chamber. So eliminates need for the sampling or physical removal of the sample. And another thing is it can be used for the dark samples also. And in case of UV and all, we'll go for the very dilute samples, but here we can use for the dark samples also. Analyze the large sample volumes that can be done by the microwave spectroscopy. And another thing is monitoring of drying process in industry. So take an example as a huge cakes that wet materials when they dry uh, in a big reaction tanks, so that vessels, so that can be identified or monitoring by microwave spectroscopy. So and other thing is um, uh, the structural determination of OCS uh, molecules or ozone molecules and even isotopes in order to identify so many um, oxyfluoride molecules and even inversion spectrum of ammonia molecules for all these cases for the abundance of isotopes we are using you know microwave spectroscopy these are the applications of microwave spectroscopy next you come to the limitation part so there are two main limitations are there so uh, one limitation is it is uh, it is not suitable for the characterizing of new compounds so that is uh, applicable for the whole compound so uh, the characterizing of a new compound is not applicable um, microwave spectroscopy is fundamentally not suitable the reason is the microwave spectrum is a property of the molecule as a whole and it is not possible to relate certain parts of the spectrum to certain parts of the molecule. So other thing is the substances to be studied must be in gaseous state. So these two are the limitations of spectroscope, microwave spectroscopy. 
so next move to the differences between microwave and infrared spectroscopy so we usually commonly we call it as a um, vibrational rotational spectroscopy in case of uh, vibrational uh, spectroscopy the molecule will undergo even rotation and even vibration also but in case of uh, rotational spectroscopy the molecule uh, will undergo only rotation in case of microwave the major difference is the absorption spectrum is character characteristics of the absorbing molecule as a whole as a whole in case of infrared the characteristics of functional group the spectra gives the characteristics of the functional groups so here the resolution of lines is more in case of microwave the resolution of line is less in case of infrared and the substance must be in gaseous state is a necessary criteria in case of microwave so in case of infrared spect spectroscopy whether the molecule is in solid liquid or gaseous state so not, no, no, that's not a matter so we can absorb uh, we can get a spectrum another thing is the spectra absorbed are nearly always absorption spectra in case of microwave but in case of infra you know infrared either it is an absorption or in case of uh, or it is emission spectra so up till we discussed about uh, introductory part theory what are the necessary criteria what is the dipole moment what is permanent dipole moment and uh, how to calculate uh, moment of inertia and uh, energy transition between the different energy levels in a uh, rigid rotator and some applications of instrumentation and even some applications of microwave spectroscopy here i Uh, given some assignment questions so that will help you out uh, after listening this lecture so solve these assignments so that will help you out for the examinations so which of the molecule exhibit a rotational or vibrational spectra so i given four you uh, know eight to nine molecules you just identify which will exhibit rotational or microwave uh, vibrational spectra and one more question from the value of b i given so you calculate the bond length of h2 just we discussed about uh, co and even hcl molecule also now you calculate for h2 rotational spectra for hcl shows a series of lines separated by 20 find the moment of inertia same thing so here the same question i given here you solve that why the pure rotational spectra studied only in the gaseous states of atoms and molecules so you just answer these question that this will help you for the further examination so here we came to the uh, you know almost uh, end of the topic that is the summary so in this we concerned with the uh, uh, transitions between the rotational energy levels in the molecules the molecule gives a rotational spectrum only it has a permanent dipole moment and we discussed instrumentations applications and calculations of uh, uh, discussing about the rigid rotator and even uh, you know applications and all uh, the another thing is the substance should be in the gaseous state that is a thing and we will use this you know to calculate the internuclear and uh, distance of uh, you know atoms so thank you thank you very much